The World of Narnia has captivated readers since British author C.S. Lewis launched his Seven Book Chronicles of Narnia series in 1950, with three live-action film adaptations becoming worldwide hits. However, there were some key differences between the actors cast in leading roles and the characters as Lewis described them in the books. Here's how the cast of Chronicles of Narnia should really look. For Narnia! The White Witch The big villain at the heart of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the White Witch is described as a great lady, taller than any woman that Edmund had ever seen. She also was covered in white fur up to her throat and held a long straight golden wand in her right hand and wore a golden crown on her head. Her face was white, not merely pale, but white like snow or paper or icing sugar, except for her very red mouth. It was a beautiful face in other respects, but proud and cold and stern. That's a pretty spot-on description of actress Tilda Swinton's version of The White Witch, except she had nude lipstick rather than that very red mouth. Lucy Pavensi The Pavensi siblings actually got some of the least detailed descriptions in the book, perhaps because Lewis wanted children reading the books to imagine themselves in the story and see Narnia through their eyes. Still, there are a few details that separate the movie children from the book children, beginning with Lucy. In the book, Lucy doesn't get a physical description until she's a grown-up, at which point Lewis says she was always gay and golden-haired, and all princes in those parts desired her to be their queen. Actress Georgie Henley has brown hair, which doesn't fit with the description or the book's illustrations, which show Lucy to be a blonde. Edmund Pavensi Though actor Skander Keynes has brown hair and brown eyes, his character Edmund is described in the books as being blonde with blue eyes. The only other physical description Lewis provides for Edmund comes when he's betraying his family for the White Witch's Turkish delight, at which point he says, his face had become very red and his mouth and fingers were sticky. He did not look either clever or handsome, whatever the Queen might say. Right, maybe I have some more Turkish delight now. While Keynes, the actor, is likely clever and handsome in real life, he did a good job at portraying the Turkish delight fiend, Peter Pavensi. Oldest sibling Peter also doesn't get much of a description until he's an adult, at which point Lewis says he is a tall and a deep-chested man and a great warrior. In the book's illustrations, he's usually pictured as having brown hair, while William Mosley has dirty blonde locks. Don't they have hair dye in Narnia? Hiking Peter, the Magnificent. Probably could have left off the last bit. Susan Pavensi. Described by Lewis as the beautiful one in the family, the adult Susan is a tall and gracious woman, with black hair that fell almost to her feet, and the kings of the countries beyond the sea began to send ambassadors asking for her hand in marriage. Actress Anna Popperwell has long, dark brown hair, and although it doesn't quite reach to her feet, Popperwell does possess the striking beauty that Lewis describes for the character, and that fighting spirit too. Mr. Tumnus. C.S. Lewis's dream of the world of Narnia started with one image, a fawn carrying parcels in a snowy wood. This fawn, Mr. Tumnus, understandably gets a fair amount of description compared to other characters in the books. He was only a little taller than Lucy herself, and he carried over his head an umbrella, white with snow. From the waist upwards, he was like a man, but his legs were shaped like a goat's. The hair on them was glossy black, and instead of feet, he had goat's hoofs. He also had a tail, but Lucy did not notice this at first because it was neatly caught up over the arm that held the umbrella, so as to keep it from trailing in the snow. He had a red woolen muffler around his neck, and his skin was rather reddish too. He had a strange but pleasant little face, with a short pointed beard and curly hair, and out of the hair there stuck two horns, one on each side of his forehead. Lewis later adds that he has brown eyes. James McAvoy's Mr. Tumnus has the goat legs, although the hair on them is brown rather than glossy black, likely to match McAvoy's natural natural hair color. While he does have the curly hair Lewis discusses, his skin isn't rather reddish and his eyes are blue instead of brown. Still, close enough. At least he looks better than this guy. Welcome to Narnia, I'm Mr. Tumnus. Hey, give me back my shark, you goat bastard! Hey! <laughs> Prince Caspian like the Provences, Prince Caspian doesn't get much of a description. In The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Lewis gives one of his only details about the prince, saying he's a golden-haired boy. This doesn't fit with Ben Barnes' dark-colored hair in the film, at all. But the big difference between the page and the screen is in age. According to the books, Prince Caspian should be around 13 when the events of the film take place. Actor Ben Barnes was 27, and while he could pass for slightly younger, he definitely didn't look like a teenager. So, not even close, really. Trumpkin 
Peter Dinklage's Red Dwarf Trumpkin wasn't quite as red as he was supposed to be. While Dinklage's version of the surly character featured sandy blonde hair, the character is actually described as having an immense beard and whiskers of coarse red hair. That is, rather like a fox's. Lewis also says that he has twinkling black eyes, not fitting with Dinklage's blue-green. Dinklage does have the beak-like nose, which was added with prosthetics that were part of the nearly three-hour makeup process for the part. Eustace Scrub The first line of the Voyage of the Dawn Treader snarks, there was a boy called Eustace Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. This line is one of the many ways that Lewis highlights Eustace's general intolerableness, which the author implies as manifested through his physical appearance, describing him as a puny little person who couldn't have stood up even to Lucy. Actor Will Poulter has experience playing insufferable characters, and he did a good job with this one. He captured Eustace's persona well, especially given the limited physical characteristics Characteristics Lewis provided. However, he was a little too old for the part. The actor was 16 when the movie was filmed, while Eustace is only supposed to be 9. While he can pass for younger than mid-teens, the actor still didn't look quite as young as the character was supposed to be. Aslan Lewis describes Aslan as being a big lion, and, sure enough, he is just a big old lion. Yep. Great job! Thanks for watching! Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too!